your worst waifu, and I'm here to talk about the Crunchyroll Anime Awards for 2018. I'm gonna give my hot takes, maybe get a little salty, but overall, it should just be me talking about Crunchyroll Anime Awards, which I did last year, and I think my editing got better, so that's good at least. I actually watched a lot of seasonal anime last year, so I feel like my opinion is quite well informed, whatever that means. It doesn't mean anything, but uh, it didn't really matter because nothing I voted for won. That's not completely true, but almost nothing I voted for won. Kind of salty. These are the salty awards for me. I actually watched the Twitch stream this year, which was pretty funny. So I'm gonna go in the same order that they announced them during the actual Twitch stream and let's get into it. And the winner for best opening sequence was... Darling in the Franks, Kiss of Death. What do I think about that one? Uh, I am not salty because I think it's a great OP. It's very catchy. It looks very nice. I understand why it won. Did I vote for it? Of course not. I voted for Kakegurui. I was actually really conflicted voting for Kakegurui because it was more in my mind an anime from 2017. But I understand, I think it's like they chose to put it here because it wasn't legally streamable until 2018. Anyways, it doesn't matter because I voted for it, has beautiful visuals, kind of everything I would be looking for in an OP. I was tempted to vote for Wotokoi because it was my favorite rom-com last year, but it really isn't what I look for in a favorite OP of the year, although it is very catchy and cute. I mean, I'm sure everyone kind of remembers the, like the little do-do-do-do choreography. It, it was just a very cute OP that suited the show very well. For the best ending sequence, we had the following nominees. And the winner was do 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 that's not even the song but uh it's attack on titan and i'm not surprised very popular show if pe someone out there really loves this ed tell me and tell me why i'm just curious i really want to know like the people that are the majority why is it just because it's your favorite i just want to know why and if that's why i'll shut up <laughs> i'm not trying to rant is it because you like the show so much that the ED reminds you of the show and that's really awesome? Because I understand that if it's your favorite anime, sometimes you become biased to the ED and that makes complete sense. I voted for After the Rain's Refrain and I did this because I felt like it was really the perfect ED for the show. I never skipped the ED. Essentially, you'd watch the show and then you'd get this beautiful song at the end and it just it kind of just perfectly summed up the show is like a little cherry on top it was it was beautiful so now time for the really important questions who was best boy of 2018 and the nominees were honestly when watching this i was just like please please don't be deku don't be deku please don't be deku but of course it was deku I mean, of course it was Deku. I don't hate Deku, not even a little bit. I think he's cute. I love My Hero Academia. But the thing is, he was best hero last year and Shoto was best boy last year. I feel like if you're gonna put any character from My Hero Academia in this like best boy category, they're gonna win. Is that bad? I don't know. But the fact is, my best boy wasn't here at all. Where is Ash Lynx from Banana Fish? <laughs> Seriously, Ash Links from Banana Fish, best boy of 2018, he was robbed. Head down in silence for a second. And I didn't mean to just go on a mini rant about Ash Links and Banana Fish. I meant to say I voted for Joe from Megalobox. I like him, he's inspirational, Megalobox is a really cool show, and uh, good old Joe. Yep, voted for Joe. Now it's time for the most prestigious award, Best Girl. And the nominees were... The winner was Mai from Rascal Senpai Dreams... Rascal Senpai does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai? What? Butayoro something something. Um, you know. And how do I feel about that? Well, I did like Mai. Her or Futaba were my favorites from Bunny Girl Senpai. Although I voted for Anzu from Hina Matsuri because Anzu is my precious apricot and she's so freaking funny and cute. 
definitely would have voted Hinamatsuri for best comedy if there was one this year, but unfortunately they left that category out. A new category this year was for Best Japanese Voice Actor, and the nominees for that category were... And the winner was... Mamoru Miyano from Zombieland Saga. And I expected this. I voted for Mamoru, so I'm happy. And actually, if you're keeping count, this is the first time anyone I voted for won. So... That's kind of sad. If you're familiar with him, he also does the voice acting for Light Yagami from Death Note, Rintaro from Steins Gate, as well as uh, Tamaki from Oran. It's so cool! Now for the category of Best English Voice Actor, and the nominees were... And the winner was Christopher Sabat for All Might's voice in the English dub. Christopher Sabat is a very popular English voice actor. He's very good. I also voted for him and he won. So there we go. I've gotten two so far. Okay, on to the next category, which is best protagonist. And the nominees were... So the winner for best protagonist was Rumiu. Tempest? I have barely watched any of this show and I enjoyed it. I think I've seen four episodes. So I probably should remember the main character's name, eh? I like him. I was surprised by this and I think a lot of people were. So the shows that you don't think are gonna win when they win, they make people very happy. But I voted for Retsuko from Agretsuko because I think she is one of the most relatable characters like ugh, watching that show. You can really understand her struggles and not to say like, oh, self-insert character, best character, just I think she was done really well. Which is funny that I wanted to vote for someone who I thought was really relatable because the other person I thought about voting for was Yumeko. And Yumeko is just not relatable at all unless you're a very strange person. And for best antagonist, we had all these awesome nominees. That Momonga. Momonga's not a freaking antagonist. And the winner for best antagonist was All for One. I saw this coming, so I'm not even gonna say anything. Anyways, I voted for Tsurumi because he genuinely creeps me out and is a very interesting villain, as well as Golden Kamui was definitely one of my favorite anime from 2018. I loved it, CGI bears and all. Go watch Golden Kamui. Next up was best animation, and the nominees were... And the winner was Violet Evergarden. And I voted for Violet Evergarden. And I understand some people might say Violet Evergarden isn't the best animation, like actual animation, and that it's pretty colors the anime, and that it's filters the anime. And I understand that kind of argument, but for me, it was just the most visually stunning and that's kind of what that category represented to me, and I think it does for a lot of other people. Unfortunately, there's no real definition on what these categories mean. So, sorry about that, if that makes you a little annoyed if you're an animator. Also, I was kind of tempted to vote for a Bloom Into You because it was the only place that it was represented, but unfortunately, I just, visually, I thought Violet Evergarden was more stunning. I feel like it should have been in like a romance category, but we didn't have one of those. But Bloom Into You was great. Another new category was this best character design, which I thought was an interesting one. And the nominees were... With the winner being Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. And I kind of get this, the style of Jojo is very different, or maybe just everyone wanted to vote for Jojo. I don't know, because I actually, I have not really seen any Jojo and I feel like that's a sin. I want to watch it and I will sometime, so sorry if you're a huge Jojo fan. I voted for a Gretzko because I'm a huge Sanrio fan. I love all the cute little characters they make. And for a Gretzko specifically, I think they did an amazing job on having Gretzko have that cute like OL San type outfit, like office lady, as well as her death metal look. Like the transition was really good. A lot of my enjoyment from the show kind of came from the character designs because they were done so cutely and then you had this kind of like darker, more depressing element to the show. I think Sanrio just did a great job 
of designing those characters, and that's why they got my vote. For the category of Best Continuing Series, we had these nominees. And the winner was Dragon Ball Super. And I just gotta say, come on. Not saying Dragon Ball Super is bad. I actually didn't even watch it. Like, that's not the point. It's just that Dragon Ball has been coming out since the 80s. Continuing series? Hmm. Hmm. That, why don't we have Detective Conan? Like, why didn't One Piece win? It just kind of seems weird. Like, if we're celebrating 2018, and you have shows that are basically from the 80s. I mean, okay, I guess Devilman and such are re-envisionings of really old shows. I also kind of feel maybe Dragon Ball has such a legacy, it deserved to win. I don't know, honestly. It's a really strange category. I don't know what, what the point of it is. What's the purpose? Like, why? Why would you keep this category and get rid of best comedy? What about Gintama? I'm so confused. I voted for March Comes In Like a Lion. It was against literally four shonen giants, so didn't expect it to win. March Comes In Like a Lion should win something like best drama. Just we don't have these categories anymore, so I don't know why this category was kept. I'm just, I don't get this category at all. That That's it, that's, I'm just gonna shut up now. Next was the nominations for best director, with the nominees being... <laughs> And the winner was Masaki Yuasa for Devilman Crybaby. I can't even really hate on this because I think it's totally deserved. I'm a big fan of this director as well, as I'm sure most people are. Hmm. But the thing is, I voted for Banana Fish because this is the only place that Banana Fish was represented. Hiroko did an amazing job directing Banana Fish. Actually, the only other thing I think she's really popular for directing is Free. But the thing that's kind of funny about that is like, I don't think that gives people a good image of Banana Fish as I think people see Banana Fish as this just like, be shown in, kind of like, you know, you know. Banana Fish was my best anime of 2018. And I feel like Hiroko did an amazing job. Banana Fish is based off of an 80s manga, actually kind of similar to Devilman, where they modernized a manga from the 80s. So definitely check out Banana Fish if you haven't. I really, really think it was overlooked and was robbed for these awards. Like it should have been somewhere else. I, I don't care if it was here. Ash Link should have been in the best boy category. Funniest thing was someone actually yelled Banana Fish was robbed during the Twitch stream. And I was just like, yes. Hashtag Banana Fish got robbed. Next category was best film. And the nominees were... The winner for this was, unsurprisingly, the My Hero Academia movie. Now, I didn't even see this movie, and I didn't even vote in this category. Why? Because I hadn't seen most of these movies. And just recently, I watched Liz and the Bluebird and The Night is Short Walk on Girl, and definitely probably would have voted for The Night is Short Walk on Girl. Maybe they didn't win because I didn't vote, I don't know. Feeling kind of bad. Wish I definitely voted for that movie. It's fantastic. But because I hadn't seen most of these movies, I really have no strong opinion here. The next category was Best Fight Scene, and the nominees were... The All Might versus All For One Fight One. I'm not really surprised about this. This is a category I didn't vote for because I felt like at the time I hadn't seen enough of these anime to really vote. I was very tempted to vote for Hina Matsuri, but um, no, I just, I just abstained because I didn't think it was really fair, whatever that means. And finally, it's time to look at the nominees for Anime of the Year. And the winner was, and I'm talking into my mic really close right now. Dun 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 You know, it was Devil Man Cry Baby. That was a really nice end to the award show for me. I voted for it myself because I really enjoyed the anime as well as I kind of liked that it spread some light on some of the older influences of anime. I had a really hard time voting between this and A Place Farther Than the Universe. It's not my favorite anime of the year. As I said earlier, it's Banana Fish. Banana Fish, my favorite anime of 2018, but Devilman Crybaby was amazing. And I really hope more people do actually check out Banana Fish. I hope people check out a lot of these anime that were nominated, especially like the ones that didn't win. So how did I feel about the My Hero Academia Awards part two? 
honestly. I'm not genuinely that salty. I think it's really fun for anime fans to just kind of get riled up about the favorite shows they had last year, and the Crunchyroll Awards is a perfect place to do that. I never really expected my favorites to win. I mean, I don't care. They're my favorites. I still like them. I'm still gonna recommend them to anyone who's gonna listen to me. Just remember, it's a popularity contest. If you wanna go look at like the best film of last year, you might not wanna look at the Crunchyroll Anime Awards, but if you wanna find out what the most popular film was, there you go. So guys, I've been talking this whole time, so I want you guys to please comment down below your favorite anime of 2018. I'm genuinely curious, and I won't even care if you don't write Banana Fish. Write whatever you want. Write My Hero Academia, and I will be happy for you. There's no shame in the anime game. Yep, no shame, so I'm gonna say please subscribe, please like, please do all the things, and I'll see you guys another time. Please subscribe. I'm desperate. No. <laughs>